And the smallest of them all was Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Yochanan ben Zakkai, the smallest of these students. And then it describes the wisdom of the lowest ranking of them all. There's Yochanan ben Zakkai. I'll just read it quickly to get to what I want to, on our topic. They said of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai that he did not leave unmastered scripture, the Tanakh, Humash, Mishnah, Gemara, Halachot, Agadot, scriptural exactitudes, rabbinic exactitudes, Kalavachomer arguments, Gzeira Shava expositions, astronomical cycles, Gimatriot, the speech of ministering angels, the speech of demons, and the speech of palm trees, parables of launderers and parables of foxes, Davar Gadol Vedavar Katan, a great matter and a small matter. He knew all of those things, all of Tanakh, all of Halacha, all of the, the speech of the angels, the levels of uh, perception that we're not used to today. That was the smallest of all the students. But the end here is that he ne- didn't leave anything, also nothing big, no great matter or no small matter. And the Gemara says, what is that? What is, this, what is the big matter and the small matter? What is it? Devar Gadol, Devar Katan. Rabbis say, Devar Gadol, that's Maaseh Merkava. Maaseh Merkava, the, the famous the prophecy of Yechezkel, of the chariot, which <coughs> we'll describe it now as... Uh, the deeper side of Torah, the spiritual side, the inner side, the secrets of Torah, the, uh, what I called before, the neshama. Here the Gemara calls it the big matter. So what's the small matter? The small matter is the increase of Abayir and Rava. The Talmudic, back and forth, give and take, the, the Gemara, the do's and don'ts, the, the halachic uh, discussions. That's considered a small thing compared to the great matter of Maser Merkavah, how God runs the world. How he created the world, how he runs it with Maseb Breshit, Maseb Merkavai, how he runs the world, what is the goal and how he brings the world to that goal. And that the Gemara, the Gemara says that that's the great matter. Again, you have to be worthy, you don't just start off with that, that's not for first grade. But the great matter is the, the deeper wisdom of Torah, the ideals, the divine ideals for creation and how we're getting there and how to lead it, how to help it. That's what gives the meaning and the value to all the details. So, Learning that, learning this topic of emunah is, first of all, in and of itself, a study of the aspect of Torah, an important aspect of Torah. The Gemara <coughs> in Shabbat, uh, 31, talks about in the future, when man is brought to judgment. I get a lot to discuss on these things, it's not some... This guy with a white beard, and you stand up in front of this court, whatever. But it's, uh, there's a heavenly judgment. When a, when, you, when a person is escorted to his final heavenly judgment after his death, the heavenly tribunal asks him, he has certain questions that are posed to him. So the simple meaning is, did you conduct your business with faith? Well, honestly, not stealing, not uh, taking little coins underneath. Uh... Or it could be understood, the Nasata did you give the back and forth stu- studying the aspect of Emunah, learning the study of the field of Jewish wisdom? Again, the simple meaning is the business faithfully. Did you study, set times for studying Torah? Did you engage in procreation? Tzipitil Yeshua, did you wait and hope for the messianic salvation? Were you expecting the redemption? And the Ran, the Chedusha Ran, the Rab Nisim explains, he adds two words, Biyamecha. One, uh, one word in English, in Hebrew. Uh, in your day, would you have the ability to perceive, to see how God was unfolding this redemption, this worldly goal of creation, how it was taking place in your day, how it was unfolding and studying and understanding and the, the ability to have the tools to decipher what is taking place in history, to see God in the world. Like that is what is emunah. The world is full of multiplication, multiplicity, division, diversity, and... How do you see the one? There's one God, one source. We see so many things that are taking place and people and creatures and time. And To see the one, the Svata Metzah, that's what Emunah is, to see the ability to perceive the one, the source, the roots behind all the myriad branches of reality, of existence, of phenomena. That takes a study. That takes uh, uh, learning. To recognize the redemption and to see the redemption and to believe in the redemption that takes a study. It's not just learning the laws of Shabbat. You'll know how to keep Shabbat. That's important, definitely. You have to have that. But there's an, also an aspect of the study of the divine ideal and how it's taking place. 
another reason the necessity for that study is, first of all, to clear up many conceptions or misconceptions, which are due to the lack of study, the neglect of the study. Because people assume, like again, the redemption will come when it comes. We'll know when it comes. It'll be so... Whatever people expect of redemption, uh, some magic carpet, and the Mashiach will come flying in, and all the exiles will be here, and the Beit will be, everything will be perfect. Uh, you don't need to study that. It's so clear, it's so obvious, it's, that's when it'll be, you'll know. And again, because of that, people have their own images, but each one is left to himself, to his dreams and whims and fancies of how he expects that to be, to take place. Again, a magic carpet, another one with a Rolls Royce, I don't know, whatever, a uh, donkey coming in, whatever. So people have different expectations of what to expect, what they're thinking. And the difference is of the ability, therefore, to recognize what is taking place. What is God doing in the world? Until that Rolls Royce comes, you say, it's not redemption. I'm, I'm waiting for the Rolls Royce. And according to my idea, that's how he's supposed to come, on the magic carpet. And that hasn't come yet, so there's no redemption. There's nothing to do, nothing to, to witness. The question is, do you see God in history? Do you have the ability to see what he's doing in the day-to-day -day reality of today? Is this part of, or how is it part of this unfolding of history that God is bringing. Why it was neglected is another question, another, stu another topic in and of itself. Uh, because of what I questioned at the beginning. It's so obvious. When it is, there's nothing to learn about. When it comes, you'll know. And what's the point of learning? In other words, uh, so they didn't learn it. But a little bit deeper is, since it's part of Torah, uh, like I said, Rav Vital and others that just yell and scream that this lack of this study is very dangerous. Is very crucial to our building understanding of what we're believing in and what God we believe in, we say we believe in. But the topic of redemption itself, <coughs> because it wasn't so relevant. In other words, it wasn't necessary on the day-to-day -day level. The redemption will come. Again, when God wants it, how to keep Shabbat is every week, how to uh, wash your hands, how to keep kosher. That you have to know every day, how to put on tefillin. The laws of the future goal of how it'll be and what will be and why it'll be and what it means to the world. Say that that's, there were few erudite, select few that learned these topics, understood these things, definitely. But the masses, you could spend a few lifetimes just learning the laws of Shabbat. Who has time for uh, the extra credit, the luxury of the future goal and how it comes about? That shouldn't see so far fetched to you because it's also the laws of the Beit Mikdash, the laws of the temple, the laws of sacrifices, the laws of taharot, of purity, impurity. How many people study that today? It's a third of the oral law, right? There's six orders of the Mishnah and uh, two out of the three, Kochim and Taharot. People don't study that. It's not on the regular agenda of the Shiva schedule. Because again, it's not relevant for the day to day uh, our existence. You can get along fine without knowing all the laws of the sacrifices. It's part of Torah. No one denies it as part of Torah. But, like I said, it's not something that is so crucial to everyday existence. So it becomes a luxury. They call it the Mashiach, the laws of the Mashiach. Something far off. It means it's, running, it's relegated to the, again, luxury. When you finish everything else, you can study that maybe. But you have to know what's going on today. So again, it's um, when the time of the Beit Mikdash, now you have to know it. Now it's not a luxury. The Chafetz Chaim started telling people, the rabbis, you have to start studying it. It's going to be built soon and you have to know the laws of how to sacrifice. What is All these laws that are very intricate and have to be studied. And so too about the redemption. When it was, let's say, 500 years, 1,000 years ago, so it was a futuristic dream. But the time is when it comes to start taking place and then you haven't learned it, then you don't know what to do with it. You don't know how to swallow it. You don't know how to recognize it. You don't know how to identify it. And you don't know how to guide it and direct it to its fulfillment. And that's what is so dangerous and so crucial now. When the time comes when it's taking place, now it's no longer a luxury. Now it becomes relevant. And you still haven't studied, don't know what you're waiting for, expecting. And you expect the redemption to be, like I said, some perfect, total good thing right away. And maybe the rabbis tell us that no, it comes in stages slowly but surely, not perfect, not complete, unfolds towards perfection. And you have to be there to aid it, to guide it to that perfection. And if you just yell at it, scream at it, reject it, and say, this isn't redemption, this isn't what I expected, this isn't according to my images, the Nitzvah of Olozhan is very strong when he says about those that have their images of how they expected the redemption to be, like when the Jews with Moshe and Aaron, he said, they wouldn't, uh, they, Moshe says, they won't accept me, they don't want me, because they expect someone that is holy and good. I was born, I was, ra not, I was raised in the house of Paro, the palace of the 
of the enemy. Here they're not, they, they don't think I'm holy enough. Aharon, make him the redeemer. So he, he talks about how the, the, those telling God of how they expect redemption to be. And if not, it doesn't fit their uh, assumptions. And it's not the redemption. And therefore they can be totally unaware, but again, not just for their own private, but therefore misguide that baby that now needs that guidance. That's what we'll get to later. That's one of the other ramifications, a very significant ramification of understanding and learning this, to know how to guide and direct. First you have to be aware what is taking place, and then you can help uh, bring it to its fulfillment.